it's a nice sunny day again today. And uh, now we're going to build the frames for the walls. Um, we do a lot of thinking about this over the weekend. Um, loads of things to take into account. We've got some feather edge bits there, which will line, you know, go on the outside of the shed. Now, what I'm going to try and do, these are 2.4 metres, if I remember correctly. So I'm going to have to make sure one of the beams going up on the frame comes in at around 2.4 metres. Because the shed's 3.6, I can just simply cut some of them in half, and then that'll be the, the long edge, sort of uh, very easy and quick to do. Uh, I've also got to remember how wide they are apart, because I've got some... Uh, loads of tin foil insulation in the loft and if it's a small enough gap I can use all that without having to go and buy any more so um, I'm going to have to try and make sure that the gaps are small enough to be able to fit all that between it um, so we've got that and then we've got the um, this side I'm going to have windows that side's going to be a door so uh, I need to make sure I leave enough gaps for all this all that lot as well so um, Got a circular saw out, got a tape measure and pencil. Uh, so I'm gonna get the nail guns out and all that sort of stuff and set to work. And uh, the good thing about having the base done is you can use that as a nice flat base to uh, put all your frames together. And once you've done it, you can just put them aside and uh, build the rest. So um, it should be quite light. What some people do, they put the, they'll do the frame and they'll put the sort of cladding up the, up the side of it and then you basically just sort of uh, attach it and then it's all done. But because I'm working on my own, I'm going to do it as light as possible. So I'm just going to do the frames, put it all together and then do all the uh, cladding afterwards, all the feather edge stuff. So I'll, I'll do the feather edge in situ. Right, I'm going to crack on. Christian UK Tool Reviews. Uh, don't forget if you like this video, uh, give us a thumbs up, um, comment, what have you. Uh, I'm not a professional, I'm winging it. I'm just making it up as I go along. Uh, to see if I can make a shed myself, and a decent shed at that. Alright, I shall catch you soon. Just a word of uh, warning that I've just realised. Um, I was ordering lengths of 3.6 and 2.4 centimetres. Um, or, you know, um, in millimetres, 3,600 or 2,400. Um, just realised that they don't actually cut it to length. Probably they'll leave you a little bit of extra. So um, don't think you can just order 3.6 meter um, long piece of wood like uh, these things here, which are supposed to run the length of the shaft because they're slightly too long. So um, always measure um, and double check first. I mean, you might get a few that are cut to length, but don't take the risk. If you do something like this, you really don't want to be pissed about for something you, that would have taken 10 seconds just to measure it so uh, just re-measure just in case there you go laid it out now I just got to do all the internal frame that's it right so I've cut them all to length and um, the height is 2.1 so I've taken the thickness of the um, pieces of wood that go the whole length of the uh, shed so it leaves me with something like 200.8 centimeters so I've cut all them, all the middle ones, they're all done. Um, one factor that I had to remember were these feather edge things. They're 2.4 uh, metres long. Um, the shed's 3.6, so I wanted all the joins to be neat. So basically I'm going to have to cut uh, every line of these. I'm going to have to have one half of these and one whole one. So I've put on purpose a line on the bottom and the top indicating where the 2.4 meters part is that side and I'll do the same for the other side 2.4 meters from here and then there'll be one button on each side to attach the two ends to so uh, you have one end there with a button going up for it so you can put nails through that way to obviously attach it and then you'll have enough room there put the next one on and nail that one in as well because obviously you've got to think about where you're going to be attaching these things so done one side go do the other and then um, 
and then I'm ready to start putting some nails in. I have got a little bit of a problem with wood warping. Uh, I thought I was going to have this. I don't know whether it's the Wix uh, wood, bad quality, or whether it's because I've had it stashed up in the... Uh, I mean, it's been dry, but it's sort of like it's under cover. It's not um, inside and that sort of dry. Um, so it's been kept out of the proper rain, things like that. But it's been sort of, you know, it's only sheltered, so it's, it's still going to have the moisture. Um, I mean, the first one here, um, at this feather edge, it's all bowed and everything, so I can't really slate the wicks quality because it, it could have come straight and true and it'd be all right, and it's just the length of time, but it could be the wicks would. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Something I just have to work with. I know all my lengths, I've, uh, obviously, you gotta remember the old uh, measure twice, cut once rule, and it is very important because I caught myself out a few times earlier. I measured the second time and found out I messed up the first time, so uh, make sure you do that, and you're gonna stop yourself from ruining a lot of wood. So obviously uh, measure twice, cut once, all set out like that. You've got a nice nice area there, there's no point struggling putting it on the grass or anything, put it on a nice straight um, surface, which is your shed base. You can put a couple of uh, pencil marks on there, you know, so like I've, I've marked the 2.1 height on there, so I can put both lengths, long lengths there, and then just fill it in the middle and I can double check I'm, I'm roughly okay by checking the pencil lines. So, um, also what I can do is put some pencil lines on where I want the um, all the different um, sort of struts coming off, or buttons or whatever you should say. So I can get every single one exactly the same. Obviously, this one is going to be the that side. So there'll be no windows, no nothing. So I'm gonna, this one's just going to be a basic one. The next one I'm going to do, I'm going to have to uh, put a frame for windows and things like that. So it's going to be a little bit more complicated. But this one is just put it all together. Um, all the lengths I know are good. So basically, I'm just going to have to nail it all together and hope that it all pulls itself straight, you know, from the uh, from where it's bowed. So you just have to be careful. Um, if, you've, if you've got the wood and you've had it for a little bit of time, just double check the, the straightness or whatever. If I'd ordered it, you know, if this was delivered today and it was all out, I'd send it back. You know, I'd say, no, you know, it's not good enough. But obviously, because I've had it for a month or two, sat in the dry over there, it's can't really complain to anyone really, it's, I suppose it's my own fault. It looked good when it came but pff, you can't tell can you. Well I'm going to crack on then. And um, you'll see the other thing that I, I mentioned was the insulation. I'll have to go and get a bit of insulation and find out um, what the maximum width I, I can uh, put on these. And then I can uh, tailor these um, the little battens to, to suit. Right, I shall catch you with a bit. There you go, I've done my best with the warp wood. Now what you're supposed to do is measure from corner to corner and corner to corner uh, to make sure you have like an even measurement so you know it's square. But I've had such a hard time from doing all this on my own. What I decided to do was use a square in all the corners. So I don't think it's going to be 100% sort of square. You know, so it's definitely not uh, being done as I'd like it to be done. Uh, if I had an assistant, it'd be alright, but I'm determined to make this whole entire shed on my own. Um, it's, I'm winging it again, I, I suppose. I've done as good as I can. Um, that's the first panel, that's the rear panel there. Um, next I'll do the um, side, one of the, the rear side. That's the other simple one. And then I've got the uh, another one of these to do with space for the windows and I've got the the small side one uh, with the door so uh, they're going to be a little bit more complicated I don't think it'll be too bad though but this has been a bit of a bore lake because of uh, walked wood so uh, I definitely suggest if you're going to do it if you're going to order your wood don't hang around just order it and do a job don't do it like me just leave it because <laughs> I'll probably cause myself more problems now so um, yeah, that's good, I'm happy with that, it seems to be okay. Um, so I'm going to flip it over there and crack on with some more sides. And uh, just a thought before I uh, go and move it, 
Um, I've only put one large nail in, in each joint, uh, with a nail gun. So uh, obviously that's not enough. So uh, I'm going to be using the uh, the three drills again. Um, I'm going to be pilot hole, countersink bit. Those two uh, combinations stop the wood from splitting. And then the last one, the uh, impact driver to put the screws in. And they're the big screws, big galvanised ones. So um, hopefully they won't rust out. Um, so I'm going to put one screw in each and then it's got one large nail in each so um, that should be enough to keep it all together and nice. I think I may even put some struts going across to brace it up and keep it straight. Um, oh, I'll have a look when I lift it up see how wobbly it is. Well just uh, st cut a couple of the lengths uh, for the, uh, the end. That's the end over there without the, um, the door on it. and. Um, <coughs> I thought I'd better point out, just in case you do it, I was just nailing it together and I thought about it and I put it all the way to length there, all the way to length over there, 2.4 metres, great. Then I just remembered, my long piece goes the length of the shed, so the width isn't going to be 2.4 metres, it's going to be 2.4 metres minus the width of the wood, which on my tape measure it's coming up at 46 but officially it's supposed to be 47s so I have to take two lots of 46 off the wide lengths uh, so that's what's that 9, 9.2 uh, so I have to take 9.2 centimetres off each width ways and I should have the cracked lengths <laughs> And it should all fit together because uh, obviously the length ways coming across there like that down there and then this this part is just going to have to slot in between that and over there and then two up straight so it's all going to fit together like a jigsaw if you did 2.4 and 2.4 it would be screwed anyway because uh, they wouldn't fit together so uh, yeah remember that I've very very nearly uh, messed up big time there well, there you go. That's all that nailed on with a nail gun. Now I'm just doing the drilling, countersinking, and screwing. I might stick uh, one more batten in the middle. I'm going to see how that one goes. I'm trying to save a bit of wood. Um, but we'll um, we'll see. Not going too bad at the minute. I've used the square going around again. I've not bothered doing the old measuring each you know, diagonal. I don't know if I'm gonna <laughs> if I'm gonna really mess it up like doing that like this, but if it's square with your square, surely it's right, isn't it? If it is slightly out, hopefully with the uh, the apex roof with the uh, bird's mouth joints, that should be you should be able to pull them together with that. You, you, don't know, you might be able to do some sort of correction work there, but it's a homemade shed. There's gonna be little quirky bits wrong with it, isn't there? <laughs> But yeah, really hot, really, really, really hot. It is a lot slower going than I thought it was going to be. But I reckon I'll have all of them done by uh, tonight. It'd be nice to have a hand, but obviously this mission is uh, to do the whole shed on my own without any help. So I'll catch up with you in a bit and we'll have another update. Right, there you go. That's the outside frame for the uh, for this side, the long side. This is the one with the windows in. So um, I'm not sure how everyone else does it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the frame that the windows will go in first, and I'm going to brace up around it. That's sort of like, I suppose, as sensible as I can think, unless I put um, two braces each side and that'll act as the because what I'm gonna do I'm gonna have four windows going across and between each window they're only gonna be them perspex ones so between each window so it's gonna be three gaps I'll have one piece of this um, 46 or 47 by 47 mil wood to act as like the frame um, 
and then I'm sort of going to put that little button in to secure the window in place. So I think what I'm going to do is just do the frame for the windows, so then at least I know the windows will fit in there, and then um, brace up around it, and then attach it to the, the bracing that I've already done. I think that's the plan. I don't know how the pros would do it, whether it would be included in like the, the frame or whatever, but winging it. Can't think of an easy way to do it. Right, update soon. Right, as you can see, I had a little change of plan. Rather than with the other, the other one, the other side, doing the struts going down that way, I decided because the window's in this one, I'd do it across, across ways. And then all I've got to do is put the uprights in where the windows separate. So that'll give it strength there, that's all in one. And I'll just put the, uh, the other struts in across the top and at the bottom uh, wherever I need them. Um, for instance with the feather edge I need, um, I need it after two and a half metres each side, yeah, 1.2 metres in from each side I've got a mark up and then that means I can split some of the feather edge in half and then stagger them as you go up. So I think that's going to be the best way and the strongest way to do it and the easiest way. Still fighting against walked wood but Fingers crossed it all goes to plan. But it all seemed to go alright with the square. So uh, I'm going to chop up some, measure up the uh, the gaps now, stick a few um, extra battens in, and then um, onto the door section. Right, good part with uh, some of these small areas that we've got to fill in is we can use some of the offcuts. Um, so don't go chucking your offcuts away um, when you're doing any of this work keep them all, just put them aside somewhere because you never know, you know it might stop you from having to go down the road and uh, go to the DIY store or have you go and get some more timber um, so I've got all these off cuts and they're off the um, 2.4 metre bits um, I can chop a little bit off these and these can do uh, all the way up the, uh, the narrow section there I don't think they're wide enough, no, not wide enough for the window parts, but um, yeah, that's that's going to save um, cutting up a nice long bit anyway. So, um, top tip, keep your offcuts. There you go, it's coming along a bit now. This is the side where the windows are going to be. <coughs> I've put in an extra um, strut in the middle. Uh, I've not nailed them or uh, screwed them in yet. Um, which I'm going to do on the uh, the other side as well because I had like a big gap in the middle so I think I'll better put another one through there and then it's going to be nice and even then and a little bit stronger. Now once I've done this, um, I'm not going to do the window bits yet. I'm going to wait until I get the windows for that. Um, <coughs> what's next? Yeah, so I'm going to... I'm going to do the uh, countersink, pre-drill, countersink um, and screw those in, uh, both sides up and down, keep them all square and stable. Um, then that's finished and then it's just the uh, the door section to do then. It's taken a lot longer than what I thought um, but I will get all this done today and uh, I think tomorrow will be um, the, the grand putting the frames together. Uh, we shall be probably, I suppose, part seven, um, sort of constructing the, the frames. Um, and get to the exciting part, you know, where you actually start seeing the structure coming together. But, um, you know, I found it quite easy, it's been fun. It's, uh, the, the sun is just absolutely, you know, it's just, I think it's the hottest day of the year or something at the minute. And it's making my life hard. I am sweating buckets. So, um, I think if, if the uh, the sun was a little bit, you know, if had a little bit of cloud cover, this would be really enjoyable, but because um, it's so hot, it's just a oh, pain in the ass. But, almost there. You know, and that, that's one of the complicated sides. I weren't looking forward to doing it, but it's actually been quite good fun. It's all come together nicely. Um, I've got a little problem up in the top there where I sort of, I didn't put it just square and it's slightly off, but 
I hope I'll, I'll be able to hide that with the um, the feather edge going over it later on. But this has been a good idea though, with the uh, sort of horizontal um, struts going across, because where the wood was bowing, it's pulled it back in again. So uh, hopefully it's pulled it in square, so it's a little bit better. So and putting all the other struts in there as well, it's pulling it all all the bottom the bottom bits up square too. So. Uh, I'm having to put a little bit of muscle work in to sort of uh, join them up together and then nailing them quickly. So uh, hopefully the whole frame isn't going to twist. It's just it's just going to sort of bring the bow in. It's only a very slight bow and uh, it should be straight. So um, I'm going to get cracking uh, before the kids come back from the, the zoo or whatever. And I'll catch up with you in a bit. Um, another top tip, when you're nailing, I found um, Try not to nail near the edges. Um, I split a few bits of wood. Um, so try and keep them central where you've got the most wood around it. And then put your screws in at the sides. Um, obviously if you put the, the um, nail right in the middle as well, you are still going to have a little bit of wiggle room to move the, uh, you know, if your um, struts slightly out, you can sort of straighten it up a little bit before you screw it in. So where uh, you have got like a second chance there. But, um, sort of found and start with the middle uh, batten first. The uh, external ones are all done, sort of the outside edges. So um, if you do the middle one it's easier to pull in and then if you pull in the middle then it's slightly easier to do the ones as you sort of work out work outwards uh, I found which um, it's saving me a job anyway because it's quite hard if, if you try from the edges and, and work inwards. So if you work if you've got bowed wood, start from the middle and work outwards. A lot easier. Right, that's the uh, second long whip done. And I've put it up to the side there, as you can see. Now it's all clear. Um, now I'm going to be um, creating the uh, this end, which is the door end. Um, before I do that, I'm looking at the uh, the other edge over there, the uh, the sort of the, the wall end, if you like. And I'm definitely going to stick one more sort of um, piece of wood in the middle there because that just isn't enough. So um, I'll probably do that first. I might as well just finish the job while I'm uh, while I'm on it, and then um, I'll start doing the uh, the last one. And then, um, then I'm going to pack up for the day, get all the batteries on charge, and um, tomorrow it'll be the grand construction day. So, it'll be good fun. So, um, right, I shall uh, update you when I've done the next section. Right, that's the basic frame done for the, uh, the door end. Um, that's basically where the similarities end with the others, with the, uh, the, the other one over there. So what we're going to need to do, I'm going to put, um, I'm going to use the the vertical um, struts there. I'm going to use them for the door entrance. So I've got like a little gap of, I think it's 15 centimeters from the left hand side. Then I'm going to put one of them struts. Um, if you can remember, we had loads of offcuts. I'm going to use some of the offcuts to brace up where the uh, where the hinges will be for the door because obviously that needs to be quite strong. Um, if I do have any extra wood, I might even slide in like a, a double strut going up there for extra strength. But at the minute, I'm just thinking of putting uh, five sort of uh, struts going along, like uh, with the window one over there. <coughs> a, bit, a bit of extra strength. And then the other strut will be the other side of the door. And then it'll be the, the basic frame again. Um, so it'll be... I don't know what I'm doing every, I think it's every 54 centimetres on, on centre or something. But a um, top tip definitely uh, when you're doing this is when you cut one of these to length, keep the end as a template. And then uh, if you're happy with that length, use that as a template for all your other cuts. So you just stick your template on top of the wood, line, cut it. Um, brilliant. You know, that's what I've done all day and it's not failed yet very good system and it and you get quick I mean I'm getting really quick at it now um, 
What else can I think of? I'm just. Uh, I'm not going to forget to square this up before I start putting all the all the other struts in there and everything because I don't want to be um, I don't want to be strengthening it when it's off centre. But obviously, uh, because I'm on my own, I'm having trouble doing the diagonal check, so I'm just basically putting the square into the corners. So it's not going to be absolutely 100% square, but it will be sort of near as damn it as, as far as I can see. And with all this, so all these struts going across and things like that, hopefully I'm going to be taking the bowing out of the, the wood as well again. So uh, that's a good thing. Right, I'm going to crack on and I'll give you an update soon. Right. Yeah, that's all those struts done. Now I'm just going to shore up the hinge side um, with, I don't know, maybe five small uh, bits of wood going across there. I'll most probably do the same for the other side of the door, give that a bit of strength. And then I've got to um, sort of uh, size up the door. I can't remember what I put in my plans, but um, <coughs> I'll need to uh, to measure from the, the bottom up. Because uh, not forgetting that the bottom frame here for the door needs to be cut out uh, once, once the... Uh, Things just about to go up. Um, so you obviously don't have that at the bottom, else you trip over it every five minutes. But yeah, I'm happy with it. Uh, oh, it's gone on. A uh, little bit of work now, and then that's all the framing done. Bloody knackered. Deserve a good beer for this. Right, see you in a bit then. There you go, that's the end of the day. Everything done. Just stacking the wood back up on there so it's all flat so it doesn't warp anymore and then tomorrow yeah, the big day putting it all together fingers crossed it all goes right but it's just that not being able to get them square you know doing the diagonal um, measuring I don't know I don't know if my my measure thing is gonna work too good but <coughs> we'll see Hopefully if anything's too far out we can sort of fudge it so it force it back over but I don't know. But, yeah. but that's it for today. Um, if we enjoyed the uh, the video give us a good thumbs up. Give us some comments. Uh, you've got to remember I am a dumbass at this. Never done it before. Not a professional at all. I'm just doing things on the fly. So I've had a few plan changes during the day that, that have uh, happened because I've just had a better idea, or thought I had a better idea. So uh, I'm going to go and drink about 50 gallons of water. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, as long as I ain't shriveled up and um, dehydrated. See you soon. Mm -hmm.